these muscles we can create a different look we can create a different persona this is how dynamic the human face is now a lot of people they ask me i mean is aesthetics just about treating old age or is it just that your clientele would be coming from maybe uh, the higher age group well it's it's not exactly true there are two main divisions of aesthetic medicine one deals with the aesthetic corrections or the aspiration model and one is the restoration or the anti aging right if we look at the global market it's a 2.3.45 billion dollar market in 2018 yeah last year has been a little slow but we are again see, seeing a surge and good increment in business and it grows at a rate of 5.3% that that's great i mean even if, if we see take examples in our lives india 10 to 15 years back people were not that aesthetically concerned but today even if you see in our clinics the demand for zirconia crowns right and more and more better procedures have increased in the last few years so this is the reason why it is the right time to get on to the bandwagon and enjoy the growth the term aging refers to as a biological process of growing older see when we say a person is aging right when we have aged it's not just the physical change it's the physical the psychological and the social with age our temperament our way of dealing with things of how we perceive things and how people perceive us everything changes right we all age we all age at a different pace but one truth is that we all will have a similar pattern of aging like when we discuss further we would notice that there are certain markers on the face that we can identify and see that and you know that will help us in identifying of how aging is actually happening and we look at most of the people aging happens in a similar pattern in most people so with the aging when we say what happens with aging we see wrinkles in crease forms on the face skin starts to look saggy folds and fat deposit folds and fat deposit like the fold around your uh, nasal labial area or maybe your cheeks area this kind of droop down we'll understand what the why this happens why wrinkles form and why the folds and sagging happens we'll also, we'll talk about this but this is the general consensus that with the aging what happens on the human face is wrinkles starts to appear there is damage due to the sun damages there chemical damage and along with that due to the depletion of fat fats that we'll talk later the facial sagging happens so it's very interesting you know there's a small thing that you can do is that you all must be having photographs of yours 5 years back or 10 years back just go on to those photographs and compare yourself with how you look 5 to 10 years back and then tell your friends to do the same thing see in most cases you would find that the changes that have occurred on your face and your friends face if you both are following a similar lifestyle pattern would be similar so aging is a what do we say very homogeneous human process so what happens with uh, age see this is a, a computer generated image which shows a younger person and a older person so what happens the area your lips when they start to thin down let's start with the lip region when the lips thin down this start area starts to look much bigger the lower jaw when we say teeth when we say dentistry why it's aesthetics and dentistry go hand in hand it's because when with the resorption of teeth right the jaw reduces there's a recession in the jaw which adds hugely to the sagging of the face we see flaps appearing right we see blotches and dark spots on the face increases well due to sun exposure fat from the eyelid settles into the lower socket lower socket means the area below your eye that can make your eyes look sunken the lower eyelids can slacken and bags develop under your eyes so when see remember this point when we say bags develop under your eyes a lot of people will tell you that perhaps i am not sleeping well i am i'm a little tired that's why this bag is there if i sleep well the bags will go away people confuse i mean your patients your colleagues a lot of them until and unless they know how these bags form it's very tough to say there's a general consensus people say dark circles ho gaye actually would these are not dark circles sometime it's something called as a tear trough we'll talk about that that the bag that develops is due to aging it's not because of any functional or you know so social changes in your life eyebrows and eyelashes turn gray even the facial hairs and the scalpel hairs turn gray ears may lengthen in some people and the nose may also lengthen in some people i'll give one very uh, beautiful example mr khan sharukh khan look at the change in his nose his nose has increased so much in size when we see compare his older photographs and now so this cartilage area of the nose and the ear they keep on growing throughout so what happens when the nose starts to increase when your jaw size starts to reduce the whole face starts to droop down now coming to the other part what is aesthetics we've done with the aging part there's lots more to talk about aging i mean uh, it's to um, if we talk about aging we can talk about it the whole day it's an interesting topic to talk upon but we'll keep it concise 
So aesthetics is the philosophy of aesthetic concerned with the notions such as beautiful and the ugly related to the science of aesthetic concerned with the study of mind emotions in relations to sense of beauty, having a sense of beautiful characterized by love for beauty. So there's a lot of beauty, beauty happening. Basically, it's the science behind beauty. So isn't it vague that a subject such as beauty or good looks can actually have a science behind it? Well, actually it has. See, I'll talk about something called as the golden ratio, the phi. It was first proposed by Leonardo, D. <coughs> Leonardo da Vinci in his painting of the Vitruvius Man. Today, when after we end this session, I would tell you to observe a few things. If you want, all of you can note down. The golden ratio basically means the ratio of 1 is to 1.6. So let's start. If you start from the tip of your head to your navel, and from a navel to the tip of your toes, the ratio is 1 is to 1.6. If you widen your hands, it is 1. The whole length of your body will be 1.6. The length of your nose, if it's 1, then the <coughs> then the breadth of your lips would be 1.6. And coherently, it's it's full. It's it, The whole nature is made up of this ratio. Uh, I'll tell you a few examples from nature of how the golden ratio exists. If you look at uh, the starfish, right? You take it from the concentric point that the fins and the depressions are again in the ratio one is to 1.6. And the most fascinating fact when uh, there was a mathematician called as Fabio, Fabio Sania, if, if I'm pronouncing it right, he discovered that the whole galaxy, when we turn the sphere of the galaxy and we measure the radius, even that is in the ratio one is to 1.6. In day-to-day -day life, the length of the tree and the breadth of a banyan tree is in the ratio one is to 1.6. So once you start understanding this, you start to actually realize that you are psychologically trained to perceive things in a certain way. And once these things fall into the ratio one is to 1.6, things start to look more beautiful or more appealing. This is a simple concept. I mean, as you observe your things, you will get more to understand. So this is one of the cases that we did. So she, she is a young girl. But she still has a little sagging. But would we call it as anti-aging or we call it aesthetics? In this case, I would call it as aesthetics because we, what we did was we reproportioned the volume to where it belongs and added increment in the dimension of where it was required. See, we added a little bit of filler on, your, in, on our cheeks with a little bit of tear trough, with a little bit of jawline and her face starts to appear more structured. See, when we say every phase tells a story, what we mean to say is that the aging process will happen to all. With the increasing age, what happens? Like we said, wrinkles, folds, and creases form. So, so, you know, sun damage on the skin or different age-related changes happen on the face. What contributes to the shape and pattern of the face? How do wrinkles and folds form? What are the other facial defects that can be observed? How these can be delayed, prevent, or even erased? How to put the signs of anti-aging across to the client? So these are something that you need to understand first. As a practitioner, when you start to when 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 you start practicing aesthetics, uh, one tip that I would give you from my side is that there is no actually way of how you observe things. I would have a completely different observation pattern, and you may develop a completely different observation pattern, and that's completely correct. When you are meeting your clients or your patients' needs, that's what matters the most. No matter how much we talk about the phi ratio, no matter how much we talk about the proportions of how to inject or where to inject or what is an ideal phase. But in the end, what matters if the patient is happy or not, right? So let's proceed further. Now this is aging, when it starts, how it starts, how it happens, can it be delayed, can it be prevented? What are the solutions? Let's start. See, aging on the face, it's, it's a multi-factorial thing. Changes occur on the bone level, Changes occur at the muscle level, changes occur at the fat level, fat pads. There are different fat pads or fat compartments in the face, which gives the face the contour that we have. So let's talk about the bone first. With the age, resorption happens. And with edentulous patients, it's even worse. The muscles, some muscles would increase in their tone or would become more and more, would be set out with aging. And some muscles would lose their laxity and become more loose. Then the fat pads, this absorption of fat happens on the face. Now, have you ever observed that most of the old people, I, I, I mean, uh, don't take me otherwise, but a lot of, uh, most of the old people would look very similar and most of the babies look very similar. You know why? Because that is the beginning and the end point of what changes happen throughout your life. 
So like we said, the bone resorption occurs around the eye or the eye region is the maximum most prominent because like we discussed earlier that due to the resorption, the fat herniates out creating eye bags. See with muscle sagging occurs, gravity always plays a role. Skin, there's a breakdown of elastin fibers, dimension of collagen and reduction in the hyaluronic acid content or the different content of your, uh, what do we say, dermis. And then there's a decrease in the sebaceous gland activity as well. Now, the question that again comes, how do folds and wrinkles form? So I give, I'll give you a very one simple example. When you buy a new shoe and you bring it back from the market, it's all shiny and nice. The area that has folds or the area that gets folded or accentuated would loosen, would have, I mean, would loosen the amount of content of elastin and collagen. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Now, then we're coming to the fat pads. So, see, don't, I mean, you don't have to worry about like, there's too much of detailing going on. But today, what our basic idea that we want to share is of how aging occurs. So, with the bones, what we found out is that the bone resorption occurs. Right, and that that adds to the aging. With the muscles, there's a change in the laxity of the muscle that adds to the aging. In the same way, all these fat pads that we have mentioned here, that we'll talk about in the coming further sessions, with the recession of the volume from these fat pads, the superficial skin sags down. See this picture. What happened? You see a lot of wrinkles and creases. You see the under eye bag, right? There's a lot of loss of volume from the face. There's a loss of what do we see the osseous structure from the face. So now we're coming to this case. So again, when we put this case, this was a mixed case of treating with both anti-aging and aesthetics. Her main concern was that she found her face to be a little roundish. She wanted a little sharper looking face. But the issue was that her chin structure was deficient. And along with that, due to aging, her jowl started to sag down. So here we added a little bit of fillers and uh, I mean, bottle and toxin added together to give her a more refined look to bring her face back into the most closest proportion and to restore back the volume that was lost. So like we said, the skeletal changes occurs, there is changes in the facial muscles, subcutaneous fat pad and the skin. Now, holistically now, when we look at this picture, when we say the triangle of beauty, today, when you sit back in the evening, just ask for elders in your home to show their photographs. Compare the younger age photographs through the face now, or you can do it with yourself also, you would see that when we are younger, the face is inverted, it's more V-shaped. But with the aging, like we said, due to the resorption of the bone, due to the laxity, loss of laxity of the muscle, and due to the loss of volume from the fat patch, herniation happens, and the lower part of the face broadens up. So we say the triangle of beauty that you are seeing here in the photo inverses down. Inversion of beauty. So like you say, these are the changes that happen. See, at 35, at 45, you're seeing mild changes in the cheek region with a little absorption and the formation of nasal labials. If you see, there are slight changes in the under eye region as well and slight creases form on the head. And by the next 10 years, see the creases have deepened up. The volume from the cheeks have gone even down. And now you start to appreciate the formation of jowls or the sagging in the lower jaw. This is our ex-prime minister, beautiful woman. And this is how she aged. So what is the total, some total effect? It's a loss of fat, gravitation pull, loss of elastin, wrinkles are formed. And see, there are different ages at how we age. And how is that? See, if a person is having a good and balanced lifestyle, there's less loss of collagen and elastin. There's a better hydration of the skin. So the aging is less. Whereas if a person is not taking care, if you're not using the sunscreen properly, if you're not taking care of yourself, obviously the extent of aging effects that you see on your face would be a little higher. So this is one classic case that uh, most of you would be presented with. See, when you see this woman must have been a very beautiful woman. In the next session, we'll share her photographs of how she looks after the restorative work. So see, it's a very classical case, thinning of the lips, the inversion of the chins, the formation of jowls, the male festooning and the tear trough. So what do you see if you add correlate everything that there is the resorption of bone, the loss of muscle laxity, the loss of facial volume, and the skin also loses its elasticity. So these are the areas that you can address for wrinkles. 
will be a little quicker. I think we're a little less on time. So a lot of people would ask you, like, what, do I really need injections? I mean, there's a lot of skepticism regarding Botox and fillers and injections as such. But trust me, it's it's a very gradual process, right? So everybody ages. So if we have the right technology in hand to reverse this process, so why not? But you know, your confidence or your uh, command over the subject would greatly emphasize the comfort of your patient. So it's not important to know everything, right? So like if I talk about myself, my core area of work is with fillers, Botox and thread lifts. So we all have our expertise in the same way when you would develop your own expertise. I've seen injectors injecting Botox in such a beautiful way that they do wonders with Botox itself. So it's all about how you see and how, what can you offer the patient? It can slow down the aging process. It can prevent the aging process, prevent to a certain extent and reverse the signs of aging that happens that too without any surgery, without any dying time. So your patient would again ask you, are there any solutions? How can I slow down the changes? How do I pre you know, uh, prevent further conditions? What uh, what has the damage happened and how can I reverse this? And what are the complications? And most importantly, do I need it? Yes, you have better solutions to offer. Yes, this is the right place. Yes, your doctors will take good care of them. And yes, anti-aging is for everyone. Now we come to an important part. What are the treatment options? Now we discussed, we got a brief idea. See, there's still lots more to talk about aesthetics. I mean, aesthetics, technically, we did not talk exactly. We just talked a little bit on the phi ratio. But in the next session, we would talk on how to actually assess the face. Facial assessment we would cover in the next part. So what is an ideal injectable material? It should be biocompatible. I mean, it should not create any reaction inside once it's injected. It should be minimally invasive. I mean, your patient should have a minimal downside time for the recovery or maybe the procedure to show the results. It should be durable and long lasting. No long term complications, no delayed complications should be able to provide natural looking results, easy to use and operate with and most importantly, affordable. See, in my practice, I have seen the range of fillers grow so much. There have been practitioners who have been practicing ahead of me, but there ha we have seen so much of so much happening in both. I mean, the energy devices or we call it injectables. We are they, every three to four months, we see a different material popping up and this field is going great. So what things can you offer to your patients in general, apart from them, you can offer them mesotherapy, that's cocktail therapy. Uh, then you can offer them chemical peels or maybe chemical abrasion or derma abrasion. You can tell them to use sun protection correctly. You can tell them how to use retinoids. You can talk about how antioxidants can help them of how laser skin resurfacing can help them of facial exercises. See, this is one questionable area. Why I have put a question mark there is that facial exercises really do not help in any way in restoring back any anti-aging So different brands have a different class of products. So it again, the choice of product is completely yours and you would have to decide of what you are injecting for your patient. There is no such thing called as a good brand or a good filler or a bad filler. It's just about your expertise or where you want to use which filler. So if we divide these fillers, we can divide them into two types. We can divide them into col collagen, which can be of animal origin. Earlier, there were fillers of collagen with animal origin. Then we can have hyaluronic acid fillers fillers and then we have semi-permanent and permanent semi-permanent fillers means they last for a longer time rather and not just like one years or two years a little longer than that <coughs> PLLA fillers and stuff and then we have permanent fillers like hydroxyapatite crystals which actually take a long long time to resolve so but be careful I mean things that last longer can have a uh, little serious effects as well so let's stick to next uh, semi-permanent have effects lasting to one to two years the fillers that you use in uh, your day-to-day -day practice so what is hyaluronic acids hyaluronic acid is basically a sugar substance it's made up of two sugars <coughs> hello hello uh, am i audible yes sir yes sir absolutely yeah and acetyl D-glucosamine and D-glucuronic acid. That's the chemical composition of the two hyaluronic acid chains of sugar that you see. So they are bonded together with something called as BDDE. <clears throat> so this 
Now the strength of the bonding would determine the quality of the fillers. You would see fillers coming in different hyaluronic acid content, some with 16 grams, some with 24 grams. We'll talk, everything we'll talk about that later on. But just remember that their fillers are not just the same. I mean, every filler is not the same. There are different types of fillers, which attracts Hello, sir. So can you hear me? Hello. So uh I'm not of animal origin. Hello, yeah. sir. So oh. sorry to interrupt, but uh, there is some technical glitch and uh, you were uh, not audible last in last one minute. Can we start again from the hyaluronic acid, sir? Hello. Hello. Yeah, tell me. Uh, yeah. Where did you? Uh, so, uh, sir, can we start with hyaluronic acid fillers again, sir? Sure. See, hy hyaluronic acid fillers, when we say they are the most common type of, uh, when we say injectable substance that is used to alter the facial structure. So when we divide these fillers, we get them into two parts. Temporarily biodegradable collagen and hyaluronic acid fillers, then semi permanent filler, which can again be hyaluronic acid fillers, and then permanent fillers, which are basically silicon or maybe hydroxyapatite crystals and stuff. So, there are so many brands that sell hyaluronic acid fillers, and every brand is a good brand. It just depends upon which is the right brand for you to use for a concern that you're addressing. So, there's nothing called as a good brand or a bad brand. It's a completely your choice which brand you want to use. So, when we let's go, let's go into the details, it'll take a lot of time. So semi-permanent fillers are something that would last you for one to two years, which most of the fillers that you inject would. And permanent fillers are something that would go beyond two years, right? So both of them have different lasting and both of them have a different way of how we treat patients with. Remember, if it's a short-term or a semi-permanent filler, it can easily be reversed. So the chances of complications are less. But when you go for permanent fillers, it can be a little scary if complication occurs. So hyaluronic acid is basically a disaccharide sugar and acetyl d glucosamine and D-glucuronic acid. So this is what the composition of this sugar is. And it's uh, bonded by a cross-linking agent called as BDDE. So uh, if you understand it's a sugar substance, which is derived from a bacteria called as Streptococcus aquae. You don't need to remember that just like for inference. So it's a bacterial derived product, which is uh, an exotoxin, <coughs> which is a product derived from the bacteria. And then we come, how do hyaluronic acid fillers work? See, if there's a wrinkle and then you inject and the wrinkle's correct, right? And then the hyaluronic acid would absorb in a lot of water from its surrounding tissue, giving the tissue a more plumpy look. And now let's talk about the next topic, that's botulinum neurotoxin type A. There are basically seven types of neurotoxins derived from clostridium botulinum, A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, and G, H. So we use type A, which is the only and only type that can be used on humans and is safe for humans. So when we say botulinum toxin it's it, it sounds dangerous right if you tell a patient that it's it's a neurotoxin some people might get scared that it's a toxic substance but you need to remember it's a purified neurotoxin that means it has a controlled action on how it works so botulinum toxin type a relaxes facial muscles by blocking neurotransmitters of nerve impulses at the neuromuscular junctions so there's something called as a that complex that is formed at the neuromuscular junction which aids in the release of acetylcholine so this uh, the botulinum toxin it goes and cleaves off one of the uh, strands of that called the snap 25 which further prevents the release of acetylcholine and hence pre prevents the moving of the muscle it's simple like acetyl just imagine acetylcholine is the trigger for your muscles to move so this neurotoxin or botox or botulinum neurotoxin whatever we call it would prevent the release of the acetylcholine and hence prevent your muscles from moving. So it's very easy for you, for you to explain to your patients. Like you can give them the example of the shoe like I gave. That if with constant use, the creases deepen on everything, right? So if we reduce the use or if we reduce the tone of use of the muscle, we can prevent the wrinkles from forming further. But remember one thing, Botox only, uh, sorry, botulinum toxin on, only treats dynamic wrinkles it does not treat static wrinkles right 
what is the difference between static and dynamic wrinkles static wrinkles are the ones that anyways appear on your face irrespective if you are moving the muscle or not and dynamic wrinkles are the ones which appear on your face once you move your muscles so if you're moving your eyebrows and the wrinkles are appearing well that's a dynamic wrinkle and it can be treated but if there is no motion on the face and still you can see wrinkles but botulinum toxin is not the product for it you should go for dermal fillers so botulinum toxin is also used in a lot of uh, when we say dental issues such as tmj disorders bruxism oromandibular dystonia mandibular spasm pathological clenching dental implants and surgery gummy smile and mastectomy hypertrophy see the last two gummy smile and mastectomy hypertrophy you would find your patients a lot of patients that come to you with this concern and you were perhaps not treating them so once you understand of how you can incorporate the use of botox in a very small amount and that can give wonderful results so this is a case that we did with masseters see the guy had a huge mastectric load so once the botox uh, botulinum toxin we injected here 70 units that means 35 on each side there the muscle reduced its tone and his face started looking more slimmer now when we come complication and adverse events see there is one cardinal rule be slow be empathetic and be observant if you are slow if you are careful if you are aspirating before injecting fillers and you are observing the area you are injecting in the chances of complication is a little less and one thing i always and always say that never be confident make sure you understand the anatomy extremely well before you start injecting your patients otherwise complications can be grave so if you talk about what worst complication we have seen we've seen cases go into blindness that that's the worst that can go to it can even go to cerebral embolism so the chances of creating havoc with fillers is a lot more than with botox so i always say start with botox get your control on your injection potential or how you can inject and understand the anatomy well before you start with fillers see these are some minor complications like bruising and swelling this can happen and this generally you know most of it subsides on their own and when your patient asks that you know will there be any pain be honest yeah a little bit of pain is always there when you're injecting something it's not like uh, something compared to a surgery it's minimal pain but yes a little discomfort can be there a little swelling can occur after the injections bruises are unpredictable anybody can bruise and anybody can bruise anyone so it there is nothing saying that i have injected so many people so i won't be bruising so once in a while we all encounter bruises in our practice just a minute yeah so when we say what are the major complications see uh, why i was emphasizing so much on understanding the facial anatomy or to understand the anatomy well is because there are certain major vessels that move along the face like the facial artery if by chance you inject into an artery you obstruct the blood flow from reaching into a particular area and that can lead to the necrosis of that area nodules a very tough to treat you might have to highlight if you create nodules so be slow be observant when you inject and always like harlan a days keep in hand before you're injecting and when you learn how to inject fillers also learn how to inject harlan a days to reverse the effect of fillers as well because once you create a complication that will be a really 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 panicky time so you know be prepared take your time to go slow you don't have to rush into injecting patients or to doing everything go slow it takes time and everybody learns with time while you inject you create some mistakes you will going to do some you know blunders and that that's okay and that that's a part of practice but but make sure that you study anatomy well enough so that any complication the risk of any complication can be minimized see there is minor complications such as like say uh, uh, hypersensitivity or bruising and stuff so these are the, most of the complication one more thing that i would like to add most of the complications serious complications that you would see with fillers would occur in the first 30 minutes so the patient would be in front of you while you see them going into complication so you have a higher chance of managing them hypersensitivity reaction with fillers is very 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 rare it i have never seen one in my practice and even if there is a little bit of hypersensitivity that was ma majorly due to the lidocaine or the anesthetic agent present inside the filler major complications can be true granulomas and granulomas can be very tough to treat so one more thing that uh, when we inject make sure that the area that you are injecting your people in uh, your patients in is hygienic 
so don't rush into it do not give in to pressure of injecting people in in areas that you do not feel is safe make yourself comfortable comfortable make the patient comfortable observe talk to the patient understand the needs and then only proceed to inject see it's easy to increase or you know to inject more but it's a little tough to reverse the excess that you have injected see granulomas can form late and even with the covid vaccine there has been some reported cases of hypersensitivity reaction occurring in people with fillers so and most of these reactions though they self subsided and no medical intervention was required but still uh, it's it's important to know that even late complications can occur even the filler the area that you have injected the filler in it can migrate into some other area right so complications can always be there but if you're well prepared i'm sure you'll manage them these are some i mean uh, another detail point so let's uh, summarize the whole thing before we move on to the question and answer session so facial aesthetics is basically the science behind the art of beauty right so that means it has no fixed road map you can create your own road map always have a detective eye and a feather hand what by that what i mean is that observe keenly and be very soft and slow while you inject listen to the patient every face tells a story so when your patient comes to you it's fine we we want them to look perfect we want them to look great but it's not always necessary that the patient is looking for the same sometimes if you create great treatment plan can vary from patient to patient from doctor to doctor even the choice of filler can change from doctor to doctor so it's it's a mutual discussion that happens am i audible yes sir yeah inject slowly and steadily like i said so why i say one more reason of injecting slowly and steadily and always and always aspirate before you inject fillers no matter how many years you have been injecting for always aspirate please it it reduces the chances greatly three days back while i was injecting i had a positive aspiration and if you have a positive aspiration thank god you are saved so complications can occur it's it's okay i mean if you can manage them well aesthetics is a journey it starts with botox and ends with a smile the more you inject the more you learn if you pain them you do not retain them if you bruise them you lose them so go slow and go gently and lastly dentists are the best injectors this is solely believe thank you so any question and answers uh, was up there right thank you so much sir it was an awesome uh, session and i hope uh, we are very much uh, motivated towards doing uh, the sessions now more of uh, facial aesthetic sessions well uh, doctor i'll tell you one thing that you know it's it's really the hindrance that is actually stopping a lot of people from starting facial aesthetics so even yeah. like uh, I'll, i'll share my story when 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 i started the facial aesthetics it, it was a little uh, dicey i mean people say you you are into completely uh, dental background and you are going into dermatology but then you need to make clear this is not dermatology yes right? sir uh, this is not dermatology it's aesthetics it's okay. it's a completely different segment of science it's it's not it's got nothing to do with dermatology in fact what i believe is that the dental surgeons have a better command in understanding the facial muscles Mm -hmm. apart from plastic surgeons right so we have yeah. in depth knowledge of this region of how these facial muscles are moving and with the new trend that is coming up now people want more and more natural looking results no, no, right. most of my patients they do not want to look like any model they do not want to look the perfect them they just want to look mm -hmm. like a better version of themselves so to understand mm -hmm. the patient to understand how the muscles are moving and you know, how the patient is emoting is very important right sir so so yeah let's take so, the questions uh, Uh, so uh, sir i would uh, ask for your permission before starting the question answer session let me just uh, introduce uh, all our attendees to our organization and uh, all right so we have this uh, so we are dentist channel dot online our main motive is to spread the dental awareness among the dental fraternity to bring all the, basically our motto is that every dentist is a star so kindly i request everyone to save this number and send their full name on this number on whatsapp so you'll be getting all the updates about the next uh, webinars and workshops whatever we have you will be getting all the updates on this from this number so i request everyone to kindly save this number with your full name 
I'll be introducing you to some upcoming webinars that we have online. On-site webinars we are not having these days, but online webinars we have a lot. Uh, tomorrow we'll be having two sessions. Uh, the morning session will be about tele dentistry by Dr. Sakshi Kataria. The timing would be 11:30 a.m. And in the evening we'll be having one session on Botox, current and emerging emerging uh, trends for dental practitioners. We'll be having it by Dr. Sushobit Suri at 6 p.m. in the evening. And again, the part two for the same session, facial aesthetics part two, will be having on next Saturday, that is 17th of July, 7 at 7 p.m. So I request uh, everyone to kindly join. And uh, yes, after that, we'll be having one workshop as well with, the, with Dr. Garewal, and uh, we'll be announcing all the details very soon. And you'll be getting all the details uh, and links for the webinars on our site, even.dentistchannel.online. And... Uh, on our social platform as well. So we have prime membership for our channel. You get certificate of participation for every event. You get a, you get a lot of added benefits with the prime membership. So I request everyone to get this done. And you can check all the details on our channel, www.dentistchannel.org. These are our social media handles we are on facebook instagram youtube and twitter you can join us everywhere so now i'll be taking up the question and answers all right so uh so first question is from Charu. She's asking, uh, can you please explain golden ratio? Uh, hi, Charu. Uh, so the golden ratio, like you said, right? See, the golden mm -hmm. ratio is something that God set up to the universe. So there has to be a certain mathematical formula that things follow to create a certain pattern. So I would say now there's a beautiful documentary by National Geographic on the golden proportion. So it's there on YouTube. Just go out and see the document. You will have a much in-depth understanding. See, it was used right from the Egyptians to the Assyrians to the Mayans. We have just decoded it and started using in the face for the last 15, 20 years maybe. But it is not something that we invented or we discovered. We, uh, yeah, we just discovered it. We didn't invent the golden ratio or the golden proportions. So it's, it's something, it's a cardinal rule that the whole universe is made up of this proportion. And if you're further interested into numerology, or you believe in a little bit the numbers play a role in identifying and making things. So there is a theory by Nikola Tesla. It's called the 369 theory. I would highly re recommend you to go and watch this and understand this. And once you start understanding the language of numbers, things start to appear much more clear. I hope her queries have been cleared. Uh, next question we have from Niyati Mehta. She's asking, are there any disadvantages to the use of Botox? I guess uh, we have already discussed a lot of uh, disadvantages as well. <laughs> so there is one disadvantage that is solely fine. I mean, you know, you need to understand that it, it's not a magic medicine, right? So there are certain cases that cannot be treated. There are certain cases that will not show results, right? So that is prime advantage that it cannot treat a lot of things, but whatever Botox treats, it treats it perfectly. So it will just work on your muscle tone and, you know, easing out the wrinkles. And that's the only thing that it does for facial aesthetics, but that it does it phenomenally. So that's, I think, perhaps one of the biggest disadvantage. I, I, I wish that uh, we had more such drugs, such as Botox, that were so efficient so efficient in working. And disadvantage as such, nothing. It, it's more of the stigma. Like, most of you must have heard that Anushka Sharma got Botox done on her lips. Like, nobody injects Botox on the lips. The media has just made a ruckus out of the whole thing. And the company Allergan, who owns Botox, they face so, like they face so much of bashlag just because of Botox. But it's a wonderful medicine. There is nothing called as you know side effects with Botox. If there is any complication, it is majorly due to the injector's uh, fault, or I won't say fault, or maybe mishap that happened. All right. Moving on to the next question. Next question we have from Dr. Manavdeep Siddhu. He's asking, how can we manage the complications? See, uh, th the first thing that we need to understand is that managing complications 
depends upon what complication we are encountering. But avoiding complication is something that we can always keep in track. And how do we avoid complications? By being more observant, by keeping a keen eye, by injecting slow. And if you want to take multiple sessions with your patient, it's, I would solely recommend this, that if you believe that you need some time before you go further with the further injections, tell your patients and listen to your heart. See, this is I'm telling from my practice that when you feel that something is not correct, do not inject. Take it out, re-inject, aspirate, and then go forward. You just take 10 seconds more, but then do not take that risk. Do not rush into things. And most importantly, do not give in to your patients. They would tell inject, inject here, inject there. Okay, listen to them, understand them, but make your whole conclusive decisions. Right. So uh, one more question, sir. Uh, how to check hypersensitivity? What can we do? Hypersensitivity, basically, see, if you, uh, like a patient is coming to you in dental practices, lignocaine is something that we use very commonly, right? So if the patient is not hypersensitivity to the anesthetic that you have given during the dental procedure, it is very highly, highly unlikely that they would be hypersensitive to the uh, the filler because it rarely happens. I mean, we really do not see any hypersensitivity occurring as such, but even if you want to be 100% sure, just inject a little bit, wait for 15, 20 minutes, do a patch test and then go further. And that is if you want, but most of the good branded fillers that come by good brands, I mean by FDA approved and the regulated fillers, they would not cause hypersensitivity reactions in general. So uh, next question is, how often do we treat a patient with fillers and injectables? Well, it depends upon the patient's need, actually. So if uh, if you talk about lasting or the longevity of fillers, that, that's a different question. That would, again, differ from the manufacturer to manufacturer. But on an average, Botox would last roughly four to six months. Four months is the standard time that Botox lasts for. And the regular hyaluronic acid fillers, my patients in clinical practice, I mean, they say it lasts up to two years, but... I would say one year. That's the time realistic picture of one year the filler lasts. And after an year, you might need, you would need a touch up work if you are highly sensitive regarding your looks and stuff. So be honest to your patients. Always tell them that after an year, we'll keep on doing a little touch ups. So that will keep your patient in more confidence. Right. So there is one very practical question from Dr. Prashant. And mm -hmm. even I wanted to ask this question that how can we manage a you know practice in a hospital like this is one gray area which is covered by dentists as well as dermatologists and a lot of people are doing these things right so it becomes very difficult to convince the patient that yes even a dentist can do aesthetics can work on aesthetics so how to convince the patient see first of all uh, one thing that i would say is that never introduce yourself as a dermatologist that's the first biggest blunder that you can do it's one of the biggest blunder that you can do to yourself because then you would be hiding behind a shadow that you are not. Mm -hmm. See, right? We have taken five years of dedicated study to understand the facial region. And I'll tell you one more thing. If you have done good dental work on your patient and your patient is satisfied with you and your patient knows that you do facial aesthetics as well, they won't ask you a question. They won't. See, I'll give you one example. Say, if we, a lot of us go into study, studying the master's degree and some do not. But has it has it ever been that a patient comes and asks, so oh, are you a master degree in this subject? So will you do this and that? It doesn't happen, right? It depends upon how confident, how comfortable the patient feels with you. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a mutual respect that we have with the patient. Generally, people don't ask this, that are you allowed to do it? I have never come across such questions as in, ever in my career. And I hope I do not come across. That will be really rude to see that, you know, you're a dentist, why are you doing that? Because it's 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 allowed. It's it's not that we are doing something illegal. Yes, but there are certain th things that you need to keep in mind. That Botox fillers, threads, fine. But when we talk about peels and other stuff, that is hardcore dermatology. So that is a little gray area where you need to see that what you can treat and what you cannot treat. So read about like air transplants. you are allowed to order on your prescription. So it, that clears off the legality. If you're allowed to do it or not, you're allowed to order schedule H, H medicine and it's a schedule H drug. So you order it and you inject into your patients. And even in the code of dentistry, you are injecting the head region, primarily the facial region. Mm -hmm. So our curriculum says for the benefit of the patient, we are allowed to do procedures on the head and neck region. 
apart from the scalp scalp goes into a different domain altogether so even our syllabus is allowing us and rather if we take it a first step further tell your patients frankly that if they go back and compare the syllabus of the regular course would be say mbbs and bds there's so much similarity i mean so so, so we do understand of how the physiology of the body works of how the heart works of how complications happen in oral surgery we read so much about how to treat medically compromised people right we we deal with complications in and out and rather dentistry is perhaps the only profession which is dealing with medicine and surgery in such a you know beautiful combination so you're doing procedures you're prescribing you're managing so overall it, it it's a nice profession and don't 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 worry that people will take you like tum why are you doing this tum to dentist ho to ye kyun kar rahe nahi poochhenge ha agar aap kaam acha kar rahe ho aapse ye sawal koi nahi poochta hai hmm. true very true sir uh, okay one more practical question uh, this is from dr akhil menon he's asking uh, what are the precautions which needs to be taken for the patients with systemic condition See, it depends like what systemic condition we're dealing with. So I'll talk about some basic conditions so like with hypertension. So if the patient is hypertensive and uncontrollably hypertensive, he'll bleed a lot. So be prepared; he's going to bleed a lot. So you mm-hmm. might encounter more bruises. So make sure that if he's hypertensive, ask him if if they have the medicine. And if they are uncontrollably hypertensive, call their a morning appointment. And one basic thing, like irrespective if you do any procedure, be it fillers, be it Botox, or be it dentistry, we take a case history, right? So. irrespective of its a dental procedure or a aesthetic procedure your approach towards the patient would be same after taking the case history you would evaluate that if this mm-hmm. procedure can be done or cannot be done it's nothing like uh, the material will create any reaction like i said most of the things most of the fillers 99% of the fillers that you inject will not cause any hypersensitivity reactions so you need to see if the wound healing would take place like in hypoglycemic patients there is a higher chances of what do we say uh, delayed infections occurring or maybe delayed wound healing occurring so for those patients you would not you know jab them too much you would go slow maybe go multiple sessions before you complete their procedures but yes there are certain medical conditions which is strict no no like for botox there's a disease called as eton lambert syndrome and myasthenia gravis and a very famous personality suffers from myasthenia gravis if uh, can anybody guess Mr. Mitab Bachchan, he suffers from myasthenia gravis. It's it's basically a muscle weakening disorder where the trigger sites of acetylcholine are attacked by your own immune cells. So myasthenia gravis and Eaton Lambert syndrome, no, strictly no, no. Pregnancy, no. We do not know mm-hmm. if it has any placental reactions. Breastfeeding women, we do not have any safety data if it if it crosses over. So you know, like this is common. I mean, even if a, a pregnant lady is approaching you, you would be cautious while treating for dental conditions. So that's why I'm not mm-hmm. going into all that because. Mm-hmm. follow your regular practice of whatever you do and read the sop of how to use the material so that will give you an idea if you can use it for this patient or not right moving on to the next question next question is from devi nivya v if i'm pronouncing it correct so uh, she's asking what is the starting price of dermal fillers and botox in indian market the starting price can be free i mean you can always offer for free i mean it, it's good i mean yeah if you want to start off come on call your patient if you want to be comfortable call inject them yeah we all do that i have done figured that, that that's fine if you if you if you have trouble with that can be free and the maximum depends upon how much you want to charge so there is no charge limit the sky is the limit so don't confuse that you know if you keep the price less people would uh, you know uh, you know prefer you more that doesn't really happen ask yourself the same question if you're going for a haircut just giving the, because it's a similar line so uh, one person is charging say x amount and the other person is charging 2x but the guy who charges 2x does it much better whom would you go to so ask yourself the same question so who one who does be, it's the same thing so one who does better yeah so it it charges i mean completely personal choice whatever you want to charge go ahead there is no fixed charge okay so next question is do we need any legal permission or so for practicing botox and laser laser uh, you would need a proper certification of uh, the because even the paramedic staff is allowed to use energy devices so you need a proper certification uh, for using lasers botox and fillers nothing as such because like i said till now we are allowed to use it we don't know what's going to happen in the future and that's the prime reason why you know we want a lot of people to start practicing it see when people or the uh, the government makes a consensus it would make upon how many practitioners are there 
Like now, even the plastic surgeons can tell the demand people the same thing. That why are you injecting? You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. So this mm-hmm. fight can go on from department to department, and you know, there's no end to it. But if there are more practitioners practicing it, the common general consensus of the public would change. It would start perceiving that this is normal. Like implantology, earlier there were specific implant centers that people used to designate to go to, right, for getting the implants done. But now, yeah. since it's become more common norm, aligners, implants, so everything has slowly crept in, right? So it's it's a normal part of the practice. In the same way, Botox and fillers you can inject. You don't need any permission for that. Okay. So okay, Vaibhav Shah is asking if uh, you can help us with some legal articles. See legal articles as such. I'll do one thing. There is an organization called CCIS. Okay, so this is a registered organization with the government of India. So by the next session when we come now, I'll just uh, get the hyperlink. So they if if you can register with them. Okay, like a lot of people do. See if you register with them, so they kind of give you the legal aid if something happens, if you're a dental practitioner. And to be frank, uh, till date, till date there has been no. the repercussion that a dentist has used fillers and so on so things have happened if a person has been you know accused or acquitted of doing something it is because a complication occurred due to negligence like i said till now even now, furthermore i mean the domain is going to get better once the ndc passes because the ndc has a clear provision that you are allowed to treat the soft tissue region hard and soft tissue region of the oral maxillofacial region right so the, the, if ndc would come out any time soon i mean due to the pandemic it's getting delayed so once that comes out it, it it's there bang on the paper but till date there is nothing that says you can do it or you cannot do it so you can do it perhaps right so i guess there are uh, there have been all the questions have been answered so uh, let's uh... let's end the session so i just uh, would, i would want to say one thing that uh, don't stress yourself out it's it's not necessary that you know you need to jump into bad bang and of starting doing aesthetics it it's fine start with botox na no? master one thing go slow start being botox do it on a few patients B- bring those patients into your confidence even if you're doing just botox trust me a lot of people would come to you if you're doing wonderful botox you don't need to do anything else so go slow and everything will happen just have faith in yourself that's the most important thing before you start anything ask yourself that do you really want to do it because this is something that will only come the passion i mean there is a uh, very senior practitioner that he told me once that aesthetics cannot be taught it has to be acquired uh, even i cannot teach you nobody can teach me so it it goes the same way so if you have a passion for knack of things eventually you're going to do great in it thank you so much sir for a great advice and uh, on this note i would uh, Uh, say i would close the session thank you so much for attending the session thank you so much sir for the amazing session okay, thank you so and much guys for your time and for listening to me thank you so much sir and uh, with this we'll be ending the session and i request all the attendees to register yourself with uh, our prime membership to receive the certificate of participation thank you so much have a great evening sir thank you okay.